So, after a couple of years of grinding full time at art school, constantly sketching and making lots of comic, I've kind of found a way of making anatomy look legit and work right. So if you are at the point where you need to have a solid understanding of anatomy to make your drawings just mwah, perfect, I'm going to teach you how to draw human bodies in about 15 minutes. And to do that, we are going to understand what it really means to study anatomy. We're going to talk about proportions and also the basic geometric structure of the human body. So first off, what's anatomy? So think of anatomy in drawing like mastering the cheat codes of structures and proportions of the human body for creating believable characters. It's all about knowing how muscles, bones and joints play together to make figures look real. Once you got that down, your drawing go from meh to wow in no time. It's like having a superpower in your artistic arsenal. Above all, nailing anatomy in your drawings gives your creations their unmistakable identity. It's like their signature look. When I look at a figure, I immediately recognize what it is thanks to its anatomy. Whether it's a man or a horse, it, their unique anatomy tells me who they are. And I'm talking about horses in particular because I remember my horse face when I spent days studying and going crazy to understand their anatomy. I mean, it's not the most intuitive stuff for men. It's fascinating and beautiful nonetheless. In this video, we are going to focus just on human anatomy though, because that's probably what you will be drawing most of the times in your life. All right, we said what it is. Let's talk now about why we're diving into it after mastering perspective and gesture especially. Here's the deal, before you start flexing those anatomy muscles, you gotta first work through a process. Working through gesture, shapes, landmarks and then volumes gives your drawings a sense of solidity that the anatomy will need to respond to. It's like building a house, you got to lay down the foundation first before you start decorating the room. Without this roadmap, your figures will end up looking stiff or flat as a pancake, like many wannabe professional manga artists I see on YouTube. We are talking about giving those muscles the right curves and making sure they pop in the right places with perspective and flow. So this process is all about asking yourself these questions. What's the shape and form of the element that I'm trying to draw? Like for example, I want to draw an arm. What's the geometric shape, the basic shape of this. And then I'm gonna ask myself, where do the muscles start and end? What's the overall gesture? What's their volume? All right, let's get one thing straight here. I'm not here to throw every single muscle at you. There are plenty of awesome books out there where you can geek out over every last detail. And I'll look you up with some recommendations later at the end of the video. My goal right now is to make you understand proportions and how the big muscles grow all fit together. Once you got that down solid, you'll be ready to drop in any muscle you want like a pro. So the very first thing we want to nail is human proportions. Almost everybody knows about the head to body ratio, which means that the human body is measured in terms of heads. The head is used as a unit of measurement to determine the proportions of the body. For example, the ideal proportion for an adult human is often considered to be seven and a half to eight heads tall. Also, you have to take into account two factors, gender differences and age differences. Gender differences means men and women tend to have different proportions. For example, men typically have broader shoulders and narrower hips compared to women. And then age differences means proportions also vary depending on age. As people age, their proportions change as well, with changes in bone structure and muscle mass. For instance, children have uh, different proportions than adults, with larger heads in proportion to their bodies. Take a look at this picture. You can see the forehead of the child take almost half of the whole head. Anyway, when it comes to human proportions, I hardly ever bother measuring the head unit. Sure, I did it a few times uh, uh, when I was starting out on my artistic journey, but then I just started going with the flow, you know. What you really need is uh, to have 
a system in your mind that you can rely on if your proportion seem a bit off. And let me tell you, there is an absolute gem of a feature from Proco that you gotta have in your reference library. Seriously, it's a game changer. Go ahead and take a screenshot or look it up yourself. Trust me, it's worth it. It has three different proportion systems that you can use. One from Reacher, one from Hale, and one from Loomis. It shows you how you can perfectly measure the human body. You could go uh, the easy way and use the simple eight hats method, and uh, that's fine. But I actually prefer to go a bit more in depth and use the Hale system to have a bit more control over my proportions. Because as you can see, it takes the skull as a measurement unit and not the entire head so that you can measure proportions a bit more precisely. So now that you took your measures and have a bit clearer in mind human proportions, let's move on and familiarize with the basic structure of the human body. We can right away identify four main areas to look at when we start to study anatomy. Head, torso, pelvis, and the limbs. Now, the way they interconnect with each other and their proportions is what matters the most at this stage. All right, so since we want to get familiar with the basic structure, we need to identify the simple geometric shapes that make up each part of the human body. The trick to drawing a good body or anything really is to break it down to its simplest form. With that in mind, we can see that limbs are like cylinders. The torso is box shaped and the head isn't just a spear, but more like a rectangular block, if we're being honest. So let's start with the head. I draw my block, giving it a shape that also hints at the jaw. Then I move down to the neck, which is a cylinder. How long should the neck be? Knowing proportions, I know that from the top of the head to the base of the neck, it's two skulls length. So based on that, I have the length of the neck. Next, I add the rib cage, which is basically a box that also hints at the rib arch. Moving down, we get to the pelvis. How long should the pelvis be and how big? Again, we know that from the base of the rib cage to the lowest part of the pelvis, it's two skulls length. So that's the base of the pelvis. But how far is it from the rib cage? Here is a little secret. The distance between them is generally four fingers of the person's hand. Knowing this, we can approximate the distance between them convincingly. Finally, give it a sort uh, of underwear shape and we are done. Now, before moving further down to the legs, let's go back up and do the arms. We make two holes on the sides of the rib cage and place two spheres where the deltoids will go. For now, let's move on and create two cylinders for the arms and sketch a hand. How did I decide the arm length? That's easy, keep two things in mind. The elbow lines up with the bottom of the rib cage, and the fingertips reach about halfway down the thigh. Lastly, the legs. We know by approximation that the length of a leg equals the distance from the top of the head to the base of the pelvis, the pubic symphysis. So that's the leg length. How do we represent them? They are cylinders too, one for the upper leg and one for the lower leg. Between them, a sphere for the knee and finally sketch the foot. If you think about it, it's just like a posable mannequin, a toy. That's exactly what you should think of when drawing your characters. This helps you understand volumes, proportions, and how to articulate their movements. As I said before, I won't list every muscle, but if you grab any anatomy book and study the muscles, you'll see that you can apply them in the structure, realizing that it's the basic structure that helps you in understanding the human form. This makes it easier to identify, for example, where the pectorals, clavicles, abs, and so on are. There is an important concept to grasp. Knowing names of the muscles and where they start and end is crucial for drawing. I know memorizing a lot is tough, but knowing the muscle's name, you can identify and place them accurately. That's why, for example, to draw an arm, I know that the deltoid splits into three parts and the middle one is between the brachialis and the biceps. These bumps here is the brachioradialis fitting between the triceps and brachialis. Below that, you have the forearm extensors and so on. 
That was just an example, but you'll be able to place all the muscles perfectly if you study them using the books I recommend, like Figure Drawing Design and Invention by Michael Hampton or Anatomy for Sculptors by I Don't Remember, link in the description, um, which is great for understanding volumes. And remember, studying muscles' volumes is essential for applying shadows later. And if you're scared by all the muscles you have to remember, know that you only need to remember the superficial ones. Don't waste time on the deeper muscles because they are invisible on the surface and you probably won't ever need to draw them. I know that was a lot of info, but that's everything you needed to start drawing a believable and functional anatomy. That's all for now. If you haven't seen my videos on perspective and gesture yet, go check them out. Subscribe to my channel and if you want to support me, visit my Patreon. See you next time.